good evening everyone i welcome you all for today's referee and judge seminar I welcome to david pike from australia he is a very well known name in the referee and judge in uh, the iba inst iba instructors so i welcome you sir i welcome thank you holy secretary general of the boxing federation of india and i welcome mr narendra nirvan chairman of the rnj commission so i request mr nirvan to say few words mai secretary general shri jay kohli aur mr sanam sir ka is aaj ki seminar mein swagat karta hu um sabhi इसको वॉच कर रहे हैं पूरा देश और इसका हमारे हिंदुस्तान के आरजेस को बहुत ही लाभ मिलेगा वेलकम सर थैंक यू आई रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर जैक वोली टू से फ्यू देन वी स्टार्ट द प्रेजेंटेशन यस थैंक मिस्टर सचिन एंड थैंक यू मिस्टर मिस्टर नरेंद्र निर्वाण uh we have one of the best instructor from down under uh mr david pike you know i know him since many years a gentleman to the core and a, a very hard working grassroots uh, boxing man is with us a wonderful fine referee judge in his time i've seen him officiating and uh, uh, similarly my chairman my very old colleague our chairman mr narendra nirvan uh, my first nationals we were together as a referee judge in kolkata in 1989 90 so uh, with this kind of people uh, david i think uh, i wouldn't like to take much of your time india is waiting for your uh, uh, to hear your share of knowledge and uh, wish you all the best and welcome to boxing federation of india thank you thank you and now i now request mr david pike to start right thank you and thank you for inviting me to uh, take this uh, part of the seminar what i thought i'd talk about tonight is uh, the judging in relation to boxing because whilst uh, many of you are ref referees and judges and the refereeing is quite exciting and some people think the judging can be a little bit boring over the last few years there's been a bit of a change and we've sort of started to think that judging is much more important really than refereeing because getting the decisions right is the most important thing in boxing you get total disgruntlement from people if you don't get those decisions right so i decided that i'd uh, go run through the judging and uh, hopefully give you a few hints in relation to that could you put the first slide up please right and can we jump to the second slide uh, judging when judging a boxing bout there are three criteria the number of quality blows on the target area domination of the bout through technical and tactical superiority and competitiveness but remember that boxing is all about throwing punches so quality blows is really the most important thing you can have boxers in the ring who look a million dollars but if they're not landing any punches they're not going to fight so quality blows is the most important thing and what are quality blows can i have the next slide please quality blows are punches that are connect that are connected with the knuckle part of the surface of the glove with body weight or the shoulder behind it and they connect on the target area they must cleanly connect they can't come off a glove come off an arm it must be a clean punch and you must have a clear view to see that punch if you if you see a punch and it slides off the glove and lands that's not a scoring blow <coughs> it's very important <coughs> because i've watched a few fights last year from the women's world championships and we watched them from a number of angles <coughs> and we found from one angle it may look like it's a scoring punch but from another angle you could see that it's it's uh, hitting the glove and as it's coming through so you must watch and a little hint about when you're watching for scoring punches is to look between the boxers if you just look at one boxer then you'll only see his punches so if you look between the boxers you will see the punches from both boxers and that's very important 
But if the boxers have their back to you, and even if the head's jerking back, if you can't see that punch, then you can't score that punch. Another thing that's quite important is body blows. Body blows are scoring punches. And in many instances, body blows are harder to score, harder to land than punches to the head. So please don't ignore the body blows. Can I have the next slide, please? The tactic and technique and tactics. It basically means a boxer who demonstrates ring generalship. A boxer who causes his opponent to miss and makes him vulnerable to his punches. He throws effective counter jabs and puts his opponent off. He sets his opponent up. What I'd say is it's a boxer who controls the ring. He controls the pace of the fight. He controls where they're, where they're boxing and makes his opponent miss. He lands. A boxer who comes forward all the time is not necessarily the winner of a round. There's things, there's, there is effective aggression and there is ineffective aggression. And effective aggression is where a boxer comes forward, throwing punches, making his opponent miss, landing his own punches in the scoring area. Ineffective aggression is where a boxer, he's coming forward all the time, but he is, he is uh, receiving numerous punches as he's doing so. Body punches, as I've said, are harder to land than some others. And this is effective technique. And it, it, sorry, it requires a, a very effective technique to be able to land them. Dominating an opponent is where you're an effective aggressor. You're constantly attacking. You've got control of the fight and you're landing your punches, making your opponent miss. A boxer who controls the bout with a combination of attack and defense is probably the person who is going to win the round. He forces the action, sets the tempo, and uh, really controls the fight. Next slide, please. Competitiveness is a boxer who doesn't give up. Even though he's not winning the fight, even though his opponent is superior to him, he keeps going, he keeps trying. He, he may lose the first round, he'll come back stronger in the second round, trying to win. He's always trying to knock his opponent down. Even if he gets knocked down, he gets up, he keeps going. It's a boxer who realizes that when his strategy doesn't work, he's able to change it and try to, uh, try to win the fight. But as I said before, just remember that Effective, effective aggression and, and uh, competitiveness are one thing, but quality blows are the most important thing. So you must look for the quality blows, just not look at a boxer and say, oh, I like the way he's boxing, but in effect, if you watched closely, you'd find none of his punches were scoring. Next slide, please. To be a legal blow, the punch must connect with the scoring area in the body. And we all know where that is. It's around the top of the head, down through the shoulders, down the shoulders, down the body, to the belt line, which is across the navel. And please remember that with body blows, if it lands on the belt, it is a scoring blow. It's not below the belt. A punch that lands on the belt is a scoring blow but it must connect with the body. It must have the weight and shoulder behind it, of the shoulder behind it, and it must connect with the knuckle part of the glove. In a lot of cases you get, particularly with left hooks, boxers are throwing left hooks, but they're not lifting their elbow enough, and so they're slapping with the left hook, and uh, that is not a scoring blow. You, the, part, the blow also mustn't be done infringing the rules. So if you have a boxer, who's got his arm around the, the neck of his opponent, holding and hitting, they, those punches don't count. If he's holding onto the ropes and hitting his opponent, those punches don't, don't count. They must be, he must be boxing cleanly. And the, and the punches must land cleanly. And as I've said before, you must have a clear vision of the punches. You can't give him credit for a punch 
that you did just because you think it landed. Next slide, please. Points are allocated at the end of each round by the judges, and you can have 10 9 for a close round, 10 8 for a clear winner, and 10 7 for total dominance. I'd actually hope that we wouldn't see too many 10 7s because the referees should have stopped the fight in a 10 7 round. 10 9, it's very close, and some judges I found are very, very cautious about giving a 10-8 round in the first round. And please don't be like that. If a boxer's a clear winner, he needs to get credit for being a clear winner. So if it's a 10-8 round, please give him the 10-8. And don't worry about what the other judges are doing. Because I've seen, I've seen rounds where it's a very, very close round. You could toss up, was it blue, was it red? And that's a 10-9 round. The next round there's a clear winner, yet most of the judges will still come in at 10-9. If it's a 10-8 round, you must score at 10-8. The other thing when I'm talking about allocating points I'd like to talk about is the practice by some judges of scoring 10-9 in the first round, 9-10 in the second round, and then deciding who wins the fight on the last round. Now that can happen. It can the red corner could win the first round, the blue corner could win the second round. But if you're doing that all the time, and particularly if you're at an international competition, it gets picked up because the evaluators are looking for it. And so it, if you're doing that, and judges primarily are doing it, so their scores come up 29, 28, so they're just a little bit wrong if they're on the wrong side of the score. You must be confident in your score. If it, if if it is 10, 9, 9, 10, that's fine. But if you're doing that all the time or you're scoring 9, 10 in the second round, no matter who won, that's not fine. You must be confident in your scoring. And if you are wrong, and then you'll be told that you're wrong and you can uh, reflect on it and try to improve. As I said, 10, 7, total dominance. Uh, and you can score a 10-7 if there is a total dominance, but please don't uh, do it just to basically big note yourself because 10-7 rounds can make referees look really bad. And if you don't want it done to you, you shouldn't do it to somebody else. Next slide, please. As I said, a 10-9 round, very close round. Both boxes are evenly matched. You could almost toss up, will I give it red, will I give it blue? A clear winner, there's a big difference in the number of quality punches. So you're watching the blows, you're saying the red corner scored 10, 12, 14 blows, the blue corner scored six, there's a big difference in the blows, it's a clear 10-9 round, a uh, 10-8 round, I'm sorry. This is an example of a tied bout. You've got a 10-8 in the first round, a 9-10 in the second round, a 9-10 in the third round. So you end up with 28-28. In those circumstances, you'll be asked to go to preference. If you, using the electronic scoring system, it will buzz. So please, at the end of the rounds, please stay alert because I've seen judges in the past where they're sitting there almost dreaming while the thing is buzzing in front of them and flashing. It's telling you that you need to put in a preference. And the technical delegate or the deputy technical delegate doesn't really want to get up and have to walk around the ring to tell you to put your preference in. The way you pref really is if you've got a tied bat, you need to look at the last round. And what we generally feel is whoever won the last round in a tied bout should be the person who wins the bout. But uh, because in this instance, the blue corner has won two rounds, but he's won the last round. And the last round is when the boxes are tired and when things are a lot harder. Can I have the next slide, please? 
This is another example of a tied bout where, and it's tied because there was a warning on the red corner. The warnings have nothing really to do with the judges. The warnings are put on by the referee and the deputy technical delegate will put them onto the scoring system. You, it's not part of the scoring criteria, so you don't disadvantage the boxer a second time. He's been disadvantaged by losing that point. You don't disadvantage him a second time by either scoring him down in the round because of it or scoring against him in that round. In this case, as I was saying before, it should be the winner of the last round who gets the preference. And so I would preference that to the blue corner, even though the red corner may have won the first two rounds. But there'd be an argument from some people that you could preference the, the red corner for that. However, I, I honestly believe whoever wins the last round in a tied bout should win the bout. Next slide, please. Some tips for judging. Your integrity and your character is very important and necessary. And I'd like to take a little bit of time to talk about this because boxing gets a, a very bad name, particularly amateur boxing, because of the judging, sometimes unfairly, sometimes fairly. If there's a bad decision because it's a bad decision, that's fine. But if there's a bad decision because it's corrupt, that's really not fine. And it doesn't matter who the boxers are, and this is what I tell the referees and judges in Australia at tournaments, it doesn't matter who the boxer in the corner is, it doesn't matter who their coach is, it can be your best friend. It, and the person in the corner can be a world champion, that doesn't matter. Both boxers are even, and it's only blue or red, depending on who wins the fight. So please, don't be influenced by the fact that some big name boxer is in a corner and you think automatically he should win or as happens on occasions, you're, you end up judging fights and people from your hometown or your province or your state are boxing. You must put that aside. You are not from that state or province. You are from either AIBA if it's an international tournament or you're from the Indian Boxing Federation, and you must allow both boxers to have a fair go. It's unfair to give hometown decisions, and it's unfair to give a boxer a decision he doesn't deserve just because, just because he comes from your hometown. And also, it's really counterproductive to the efforts of your country, because if you're maybe pushing a boxer through into international competition who didn't really win, well, he's not your strongest boxer. So is he going to be successful internationally? Probably not. When you're uh, judging, you also have to give total focus and concentration to the bout. And where this can be hard is in some local competitions where you've had to referee before you hand. So you referee, you jump out of the ring, they're short of judges, so you have to go straight into judging. And if you've had a particularly hard bout as a referee or you feel you've made some mistakes as a referee, you can still carry that over and you're still thinking about that while you're, while you're sitting there judging. You must sit there, take a second, clear your mind and clear your mind of everything and just give full attention to the bout and make sure you do your best in the judging. As I've already said to you, look between the boxes throughout the entire bout. If you don't follow one boxer or follow the other, because if you do that, you will only see their punches. And this is what we get from coaches who come up and, and uh, want to remonstrate about decisions on occasions. And I always say to them, the problem is you're the coach for whoever the boxer is. You're only watching him. And so you're not really judging the fight. And we don't want, want judges to be doing that. So please look between the boxes and you'll see punches from both of them. And treat each round as, different, as a different bout. So the first round, the red corner may come out. He may throw a, a numerous punches and clearly win the round. 
but don't get it in your mind then, oh, he's going to win the bout because he may not because the blue coin changes tactics come out and, uh, and eventually win the bout. So we don't want a situation, and some coaches honestly believe you have to win the first round to win a bout. We don't want that situation. So treat each round as a different event. If you have a conflict of interest, uh, and this is particularly important in uh, in bouts where uh, there's a some there's a, it's a selection event or it's a championship or something like that. If there's a conflict of interest and it's a someone who's a friend of yours, someone from your club or someone from your town, you need to go up and tell the deputy technical delegate and have yourself removed from that bout. Because if it, if it is an important bout, and we've had this situation recently in Australia in a very important bout where there was a conflict of interest and the, refer and the judge didn't declare it. And it was a very close bout. So unfortunately, the boxer who lost felt hard done by and he then had some ammunition to go back and attack the Boxing Association about the conduct of the bout. And that had to go to a number of appeals. So please make sure if you have a conflict of interest, you don't, you don't uh, take part in the bout. And don't be influenced by people. We have some coaches in Australia, and I'm sure you have them in, uh, in India. You'll be sitting there judging, and they'll be in the corner, and they'll be yelling out, oh, great punch, great punch. Oh, well done, great punch. The punches aren't landing. But what he's trying to do is he's trying to influence you to think they are. So you must not be influenced by anything around you. Just disregard them. Disregard the crowd. Disregard the judges, the, the coaches. And if coaches come up to you after and ask you what your, what your decision was, or even if you're not judging the boat, they may come up and say, what do you think about that boat? You know, do you, don't you think my boxer won? Please don't make a... A comment about it. Just direct them to the deputy technical delegate if they're not happy. Tell them you can't comment about the bout because it's unfair for you to be commenting about the bout, particularly if you may disagree with the decision. And the same goes for the refereeing. If you're sitting there watching a bout because you're not being used in that particular at that particular time, please don't talk to each other criticizing the way the referee is because it's unfair on the referee and everybody is a volunteer. Everybody's doing their best. You've got to forget about nationalities, religions, race, and boxes. As I said, there's just red and blue, and that's all you should think. There's a red boxer, there's a blue boxer. And whichever one does best, that's the boxer that wins. You score the round from the first second to the last second. And the way I always suggest that people do it is you split the round up. If it's a three minute round, you split it up into three one minute sections. So you watch the first minute, who won the first minute, you watch the second minute, who won the second minute, watch the third, and then you will get the winner. Because you've all seen the fact that once that goes, boxers will go flat out throwing punches. And we don't want the last 10 or 20 seconds to determine a round. A boxer may have been scoring punches, scoring punches, scoring punches for the first two and a half minutes. Well, he deserves to win the round. So don't be influenced by the last few seconds of a bout. And stay alert. The referee may wish to consult you. The referee may, there may be a low blow and the referee may not have seen it and he'll come around and ask you, did you see it? Was it a low blow? If you saw it, you can say it was a low blow. If you don't believe it was, you can say that. If you didn't see it, you can say that. But you must be alert and you should be able to tell him it was a low blow or it wasn't. Also, there are times when the mouth guard will come out, the gum shield will come out, or when a boxer's lace will become undone and the referee won't necessarily see it. It's important that you alert him to those things. 
Next slide, please. Most of the more effective judges will tell you that the ultimate importance is to score the round by breaking it up, as I said. And that makes, that is, gives you an effective decision. And there should be no argument over who it is. Next slide, please. Reminders, as I said, you should be scoring the whole round and a flurry of punches at the end shouldn't determine the round. On occasions though, it may, particularly if it's a very, very close round and the boxes are even on quality punches, <coughs> then maybe that last couple of punches will determine the round. But when the round starts, the boxes are zero, zero. As the round goes on, you can, you can count the punches if you wish. At the Women's World Championships last year, I was the chairman of a number of uh, appeal boards, or protest boards, if you like, in relation to decisions at bats. We watched the fights from every angle and we basically counted the punches. And uh, so if, if you're watching a bat, you, you should really count the punches and know who has the best quality blows and who has the most. Let the boxers determine who wins the fight. They're the ones who will win the fight one round at a time. And remember that every match is important to somebody. I've said this in a video I made this afternoon, that two novices having their first fight that fight and the decision of that fight is as important to them as two boxers competing in the Commonwealth Games or the Olympic Games. And I can tell you, I can remember boxing as a 15 year old and the decisions that came were very important to me and they were as important as, as any major event. So you must do your best at every event, you just don't sit down and go, oh, it's just a couple of 14 year olds having their first fight. You concentrate and you give them your best effort. And remember that the referee is there for the safety and welfare of the boxers, but the judges are there to protect the career of the boxers. There's nothing worse if a boxer gets bad decisions and he get, gets two or three bad decisions, he's likely to walk away from the sport. And he may have been potentially one of the best boxers that you can have. So uh, just remember that you are there, you are protecting their careers. Are there any questions? No, I request uh, Mr. Sai Ashok, please Mr. Arjay who's uh, coordinating this to uh, start and then all the question answers from the chat box. Yeah, can I start? Yeah. Yeah. Now, someone has come up and asked me to repeat about the body blows. What I was saying about body blows is to please remember that body blows are scoring punches. They're as good a scoring punch as a blow to the head. And I've seen many boxers knocked down and knocked and basically stopped because of body blows. In relation to body blows, a punch on the belt is a scoring punch and in, you must remember that it sometimes it's harder to score a body blow than it is to score a blow head so please don't ignore the body blows someone else just came up and asked me if a jab is a scoring blow a jab is a scoring blow provided there's some weight behind it if it's just a tap 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 then obviously it's not a scoring blow, but most jabs from boxers, from good boxers, a jab will jerk the head back. So it'll have some weight of the shoulder behind it. May not be as good as a power shot, but it will, it is a scoring blow. And I'm sorry that the last one that came up, I missed. That's another one, Mr. Mr. Pike, which says that what happens if the punch hits the belt? One of the judges has asked it a legal blow. 
kya punch if, if the if punch, punch hits hit, the belt line yeah if the punch hits the belt line oh, if a punch is on the belt belt line it is a scoring punch for it to be a low blow it has to be below the belt line ashok there is a question by lalit singh rajput how boxing about can start with 00 Oh, how they start with zero, 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 zero in your mind, right? So one, one, what we're trying to say is one boxer doesn't have an advantage. At the end of a round, one's going to be 10, one's going to be nine. But at the start of the round, neither of them have anything. So we don't want you to start a round with your mind thinking, oh, this boxer's ahead of that one. You see, it's just both boxers are even, we're trying to say. Well, uh, I would again uh, sum it up now, Mr. Pike, with uh, whatever lecture you had given. So I'd sum it up in our own language. Yeah. So, अभी आप सभी ने देखा है जो अपने Mr. David Pike, जो कि IBA के instructor हैं, IBA के referee judge रह चुके हैं, और IBA के evaluator भी हैं, और IBA Olympic qualifiers, जो कि Jordan में हुए थे और जो कि लंदन में हुए थे और आईबा ओलंपिक क्वालिफायर्स जो सिनेगल में हुए थे इन सभी कंपटीशन में मिस्टर डेविड पाइक इवैल्यूएटर की गई तौर से इन्होंने अपनी आईबा निभाई तो अभी जो पूरे लेक्चर में इन्होंने जो भी चीजें बताई आई जस्ट ट्राई टू समिट अप व्हाट एवर इन्होंने बताया इन्होंने दो मेन चीजों को इन्होंने ध्यान दिया कि एज अ रेफरी जज आपको दो मेन चीजों के ऊपर ध्यान रखना वो है फर्स्ट थिंग इज योर इंटीग्रिटी और आपके कैरेक्टर के ऊपर अगर इन चीजों के ऊपर अगर किसी को भी अगर कोई शक या ऐसी कोई चीज दुर्घटना ऐसी आ जाती है फिर कोई रेफ्रिजरेट बनने का कोई मतलब ही नहीं बनता है और इन्होंने फर्स्ट जब शुरू किया लेक्चर को इन्हीं दो चीजों से ही शुरू किया उसके बाद जो एक इम्पोर्टेंट चीज उन्हें बताई है वो है क्वालिटी ब्लोज कि जब भी स्कोरिंग ब्लो करते हैं या लीगल ब्लो की बात होती है तो हाउ डू वी कॉम्पेयर टू दी पार्ट ऑफ टू दी फैक्ट की क्वालिटी ब्लोज क्या होता है उसके बाद जब इन्होंने जजिंग के क्राइटेरिया बताए थे कि किन किन क्राइटेरिया को मद्देनजर रखते हुए एक जो पांचों जजेस जो बैठते हैं कैसे इनको स्कोरिंग करते हैं उसके बाद राउंड वाइज स्कोरिंग और उस स्कोरिंग को ब्रेक करने के लिए क्या टेक्निक्स उन्हें बताई थी दैट वाज रियली फैंटास्टिक मिस्टर डेविड पाइक और जो इम्पोर्टेंट चीज उन्हें दो चीजें जो बताई है जो आज के डेट में आईबा के थ्री स्टार रेफरी जज भी होने के नाते हम ये भी मानते हैं कि ये जो दो चीजें हैं फर्स्ट थिंग वॉज की अगर आप स्कोरिंग करते हैं और कभी बॉक्सर का जो बैक है वो आपके सामने है और आप पंचेस को नहीं देख पा रहे हैं लेकिन सिर्फ बॉक्सर के सर जाता है तो उसमें 100 परसेंट आपको जब तक पंच नहीं दिखता स्कोर दैट पर्टिकुलर बाउल एंड द सेकंड थिंग वाज कि क्लोज बोर्ड हो गया और आपको पता है कि रेड और बिल्कुल क्लोज बोर्ड है तो उस समय जब इन्होंने बोला कि बॉक्सर दोनों बॉक्सर के बीचों बीचों में देखेगा तब आपको दोनों के पंचेस नजर आते हैं तो इन सब चीजों को जिस तरह से क्लास चली है तो आई एम वेरी श्योर की जो भी नॉलेज एज ए आई पाइन वैल्यूएटर इस हाई लेवल पे होने के जो भी हमें बांटा है इट वॉज रियली ग्रेट ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ मिस्टर डेविड पाइक Mr. David, there are a few questions which have been written in a local language. May I request you to please answer them, please. Okay. Yeah. Um, First question is, ki, uh, is that whether the judges can play a role if a decision has been taken wrong by the referees? That is, for example, suppose if is a, if there is a headbutt and the referee has not noticed it, and can the judge intervene and inform the referee that there is a headbutt? I'll just take uh, 30 seconds. I'll just transfer the same question in my language to my people. अभी जो सवाल है एक रेफरी जज ने पूछा है कि बॉक्सिंग के दौरान एक हेडबर्ट हो गया है और रेफरी ने उस हेडबर्ट को नहीं देखा बल्कि उन्होंने सोचा कि ये पंच की वजह से लगा है और उन्होंने सुपर आपने जो सुपर जज या फिर आपने जो टीडी है टीडी को बताया कि ये पंच की वजह से लगा है लेकिन जज ने क्लियर देखा है कि हेडबर्ट की तरफ से हुआ है मिस्टर डेविड पाइक ओवर टू यू No, the the judges cannot interfere with the refereeing. The judges are there to judge the bout, and to judge the bout based on the the criteria that I've told you. The judges can't decide that the referee is not doing the right thing. I mean, if the referee had makes a mistake, then it's up to the deputy technical delegate or referee and judges evaluators to tell them later. But what happens in the ring? That's the judge. That's the referee's domain, and the judges cannot interfere. 
is it the same case even for a low blow also, right? Only time they can talk about a low blow is if the is if the uh, the referee doesn't see it and the referee polls the judges, and that what he'll do the referee is he will go to each judge and he will ask them if it's a low blow or not, and he'll only do that if he hasn't seen it. If he believes it's not a low blow, then that's the decision. It's not a low blow. The judges can't then say, oh, yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, that's the referee has his job to do. The judges have their job to do. Uh, there's another question which has come from, again, another referee judge. I'll first sell the question in Hindi, in our language, and then I'll come back to you in English. Okay. <laughs> ये जो ब्लो है ये जो एक फॉल ब्लो है ओपन ग्लोव्स में ब्लो लगा है पंच ओपोनेंट के ऊपर और ओपोनेंट जो है नॉक आउट हो गया है लेकिन रेफरी ने उसको जो है उसी बात के ऊपर काउंटिंग दिया और बॉट शुरू भी हो गया क्या उस पंच को स्कोरिंग ब्लो में मान सकते हैं तो यही सवाल हम अभी मिस्टर डेविड पाइक से उनके भाषा में पूछ लेते हैं मिस्टर डेविड द क्वेश्चन पोस्ट बाय वन ऑफ द रेफरी जज इज दैट बॉक्सर ए रिसीव्स अ काउंटिंग फ्रॉम एन ओपन ग्लोव्स and uh, after that uh, the bout remains very normal and neutral so now as a judge and because of the dom there was only point of domination shown or only point of a clear scoring blow but out of open gloves so can the uh, judges award the round to the boxer who had uh, given the counting award the round to the boxer who's been counted you saying yeah oh. Oh, look, you can award it. If a boxer receives a, an eight count, he hasn't lost the round. You don't lose a round because a boxer has been counted or because a boxer has been knocked down. You could have a boxer who is winning the round and winning the round very well, and then he'll walk into a punch, just a, a wayward punch, which may knock him down or may make the referee decide to count that's only one punch. And so you, you can disregard that. You just score the fight based on the, on the criteria. And there's nothing about counts in the criteria. So it's quality blows, tactic and technique, and competitiveness. And that's what you score it on. So you don't worry about whether someone's had a count or not. Okay. Now, uh, listening for the ease of our participants, can we just uh, go through again through our slides? Yeah. And again, I'll try to repeat it, but try to help those people in our own language, please. So, I'll request you to please uh, be there with us so that I also go through the same process. Just take a minute. Yeah, Mr. Vedya, let's start this slide. Onward slide. Okay. The criteria that you told us, the instructor Mr. David Pike told us, कि जो क्वालिटी ब्लो है जो कि मेन क्राइटेरिया है जिस हिसाब से जजेस स्कोरिंग करते हैं इसमें जो छह चीज को इन्होंने मद्देनजर रखा हुआ है पहली चीज है पंच जो है नकल पार्ट से कनेक्ट हुआ होना चाहिए जब ब्लाउज के नकल पार्ट में कनेक्ट होता है द सेकंड थिंग इज दैट कि पंच का जो वजन है वो कंप्लीट बॉडी के साथ आना चाहिए कंप्लीट आपके कंधे के साथ वो वजन आनी चाहिए थर्ड थिंग पंच इंपॉर्टेंट पंच जो है कनेक्ट होना चाहिए और वो भी टारगेट एरिया में कनेक्ट होना चाहिए और इसमें क्लियर कट आपको कनेक्शन दिखना चाहिए एक इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है उन्होंने अभी बताया था कि पंच कनेक्टेड है लेकिन कोई भी रूल के बरकलाफ अगर हो तो फिर वो पॉइंट नहीं दिया जाए कहने के मतलब अगर कोई इनका जो है अगर गर्दन पकड़ के कोई कोशिश कर रहा है मैं पंच मारू पंच कनेक्ट तो हो रहा है लेकिन ये रूल के रूल के बरकलाफ है तो ये पॉइंट कनेक्ट नहीं होना चाहिए एंड द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज की एस ए जज जज होने के नाते आपको वो पंच का क्लियर विजन होना चाहिए क्लियर नजर आना चाहिए नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज दूसरा है टेक्निक एंड टैक्टिक्स वो हम सभी जानते हैं नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज दूसरा है टेक्निक एंड टैक्टिक्स जिसमें एक मेन चीज जो इसमें आती है वो है कि जो बॉक्सर है जब अटैकिंग की टैक्टिक्स होनी चाहिए उसके अलावा स्कोरिंग करने का माध्यम रखना चाहिए और एक सुपीरियर डिफेंस भी इन्हें शो करना चाहिए एक इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है जब भी बॉक्सर होल्डिंग करने की कोशिश करता है तो एज अ जज आपको ये डिफ्रेंशिएट करना है कि बॉक्सर जो टैक्टिक्स के लिए दिखा दे रहा है 
या फिर वो कोई रूल्स के बरखिलाफ दिखाई दे रहा है ये होल्डिंग एक रेफरी होने के नाते आपको अंडरस्टैंड करनी चाहिए ये किस लिए होल्डिंग करने की कोशिश कर रहा है पुशिंग जो ओपोनेंट है ये भी दूसरा एक टैक्टिक हो सकता है और इसको आपको हंड्रेड परसेंट उसको फॉल्ट मानना चाहिए नेक्स्ट जब भी आप स्कोरिंग क्राइटेरिया करते हैं एक हमेशा एक चीज इफेक्टिव एग्रेसर को आप अंडरस्टैंड कीजिएगा इफेक्टिव एग्रेसर का मतलब भी यही है कि बंदा जो है आगे जाना चाहिए लेकिन पंच भी साथ ही मारना चाहिए ऐसा नहीं होता कि सिर्फ इफेक्टिव एग्रेसर होने का बंदा सिर्फ आगे अटैक कर रहा है और पंच नहीं मारा फिर कोई मतलब नहीं बनता है नेक्स्ट कॉम्पिटेटिवनेस वो बॉक्सर होता है जो पहले छोड़ता नहीं है फर्स्ट राउंड आने के बाद वापस सेकेंड या थर्ड राउंड आके फिर डिफीट करता है और नीचे गिरने के बावजूद काउंटिंग लेने के बावजूद ऊपर ये कॉम्पिटेटिव स्पिरिट लटने की क्षमता दिखाता है उसी चीज को कॉम्पिटेटिव बोलते हैं और ये भी एक क्राइटेरिया है स्कोरिंग में नेक्स्ट लीगल ब्लो क्राइटेरिया जो कि आपको काफी बार बता दिया गया है करेक्ट बॉडी ब्लो होना चाहिए वजन सबके साथ आना चाहिए नेक्स्ट पॉइंट्स टेन नाइन टेन एट टेन सेवन अगर आज के डेट में अगर आप टेन सेवन दे रहे हैं तो फिर वही और टोटल डोमिनेंस की तरफ दिखा रहा है टेन एट क्लोज राउंड की तरफ हो जाते हैं और टेन नाइन जो एक्चुअली वेरी वेरी क्लोज राउंड टेन नाइन तो इसलिए जब मिस्टर डेविड पाइक जो हमारे आईबा इंस्ट्रक्टर हैं जब उन्होंने इस बात पे जोर दिया कि आपको टेन नाइन और टेन एट पे डिफरेंस आपको अंडरस्टैंड करना चाहिए और अगर आपको लगता है क्लियर विनर है तो टेन एट दीजिएगा अगर आपको लगता है दूसरा चीज है जो आज के डेट में प्रॉब्लम आई है कि पहला राउंड जो जजेस जो कर रहे हैं वो पहला राउंड जो है टेन नाइन दे रहे हैं रेड को दूसरा राउंड नाइन टेन दे रहे हैं ब्लू को ताकि थर्ड राउंड में इसको क्लोज या मैनेज कर रहे हैं कोशिश कर रहे हैं ये गलती इंस्ट्रक्टर को पता है कि जजेस जान के कर रहे हैं तो इसलिए कभी भी इसमें मत फंसीगा वॉट यू टू डू इज क्या करना चाहिए आपको बहुत हर राउंड के हिसाब जजिंग कीजिएगा एक राउंड राउंड चोरिया तीसरे राउंड पे कर दे ऐसा कभी नहीं करना चाहिए Every round should be sincerely scored and it should be properly done. Next slide, please. दूसरा है जो main चीज जो tips for judges है जो अभी हमने दोबारा दौर किया वो है एक judge का और referee का integrity और character के ऊपर इसको ऊपर कोई भी doubts strain नहीं करना चाहिए कोई भी शक नहीं करना चाहिए हमारे integrity और character के ऊपर दूसरा चीज है आप जब भी competition जाते हैं पूरा focus भी होना चाहिए और पिछले वाले जो भी गलती किया है या अच्छा ही किया है जो भी मिस्टेक्स किए हैं या कुछ भी है इन सबको हमें छोड़ देना चाहिए एंड वेन एवर यू एंटर द रिंग इट्स ए न्यू डे इट्स ए न्यू को नेक्स्ट स्लाइड वेल जजेस के लिए रिमाइंडर्स हैं वही चीजें कि वन एक्सचेंज ऑफ पंचेस इसमें वही बोले कि एक एक पंच ए डिफरेंस कर सकता है एक एक राउंड का कि जब भी राउंड स्टार्ट करता है स्कोर जीरो जीरो होना चाहिए ये नहीं कि रेड अच्छा बॉक्सर या ब्लू अच्छा बॉक्सर है या फिर इसको मैं जो अच्छा लगा उसी चीज का क्राइटेरिया नहीं है क्राइटेरिया सिर्फ इस लीगल ब्लोज इस स्कोरिंग ब्लोज दैट इज द ओनली क्राइटेरिया जिसको आपको अंडरस्टैंड करना चाहिए जिसको आपको समझ के उसी हिसाब से स्कोरिंग भी करना चाहिए रिमेम्बर दैट एवरी मैच इज एज इम्पोर्टेंट एक टूर्नामेंट का फर्स्ट मैच भी इतना ही इम्पोर्टेंट है जितना एक चैंपियनशिप का फाइनल मैच तो हर एक बोर्ड को आप सिंसियरली और वेरी केयरफुली उसको अगर आप जजिंग करेंगे कोई भी बोर्ड में कोई भी डिसीजन में कोई प्रॉब्लम या कमियां नहीं होगी ना ही आपके कमिटमेंट के ऊपर विल समबडी एस्पायर एनी डाउट एवरीथिंग विल बी क्लियर एवरीथिंग विल बी सेफ एक हमेशा एक चीज अंडरस्टैंड कर लीजिएगा रेफरी होने के नाते आपका एक बेसिक ग्राउंड रूल होता है इट इज द सेफ्टी ऑफ द बॉक्सर एंड एज अ कॉम्पिटेंट जज आपका बनता है टू प्रोटेक्ट द कैरियर ऑफ द बॉक्सर प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड विद दिस आई हैव फिनिश्ड इट मैं समाप्त करता हूं and over to mr sajidji ji and mr david pike please uh, over to mr david ji because he had some more uh, discussion so mr pike yep is there any other questions the only thing was i said till now whatever the questions had been posed to us we had tried to ask you and you had been kind enough to reply to us uh, no more questions have come in the chat box if we are waiting for any couple of questions which might pop up we will surely come back to you that's another question which has just come uh, Yeah, which it says uh, uh, the boxer is asking like, "What if the bout is tied? Then uh, the, all the judges will be asking for a choice. That is like they'll be pressing the uh, that which is called as the tie break. The thing happens when it's a tie. So in this time, I don't know if the judges who has given two rounds to one boxer and the last round, example at like the last round to blue, can the judge change his decision during the decision he has to make the tie? When even there is a tie, can you change the decision? 
I I just repeat, yeah. uh, I, I just repeat in my language no, and after that I'll come back to you in English. Okay. Let's English only. Please go to English only. Okay. The question is that the round is 29, 28 and uh, there is a warning which has been given to the boxer. And uh, because of that, the decision is tied. Now the judge again has to score on, which in that situation, can the judge change his decision. He must give 29, 28 in favor of red. But during the can he go in favor of blue? It is, it's up to the judge to preference who he believes the winner of the bout is. All we would say is that in most circumstances, the winner of the last round would be the one that should be preferenced. But that's not an absolute. That doesn't, that's not a rule. It's like a good practice. But there will be circumstances where maybe a boxer who's won the first two rounds and has maybe lost the last round or the last round's come in as even because of a warning, he will win the fight because the judges will preference him. But uh, so who they preference is really up to them. It's not a rule to say that you have to do that. It's simply a, a practice. Okay. And uh, well, this is another question which has again come up, which he says that the boxer, the judge feels that the boxer has is being tied up as far as all the crime is concerned. He it's very difficult for him. The era is generally the same for him. So I, I understand what your film, but that is a question to one of the artists. The guy is generally the same. In more equal punches. So when his box is being held a lot, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Right, yeah. And this this happens and it's it's very difficult. But unfortunately, in circumstances like that the box who is being held must find a way to get out of it, must find a way to break those holes. The referee should be breaking the hole, but if he's not, then the the must find a way. The what you say is that well what I would say is that that's bad tech and technique by the opponent, but uh it's really something that's got to be controlled by the referee. And you can't give a boxer the round because his opponent's holding him. There's no criteria that for uh, infringement of the rules. So you can only base your scoring on what the scoring criteria is. Okay. And, uh, but, I do, but I do appreciate how difficult such yeah. parts are. Uh, uh, Mr. Ashok, uh, all the questions are over? Yes, we had also, almost all the questions have been answered. Yes, please. Okay. So now I request uh, uh, Mr. Jack Oli. You know, I, it was so interesting, David. Your, uh, your commentary was very, very well received and uh, Ashok did a fine job. So I think uh, you have been to India and uh, you have seen our talent. We have a lot of hungry uh, referee judges trying to know more and more. Sachin ji, ji, abhi aur iske aage hamara ye jo arrangement ye hai webinar, wo aage bhi continue hoga ya what is the plan now? Abhi Nirvan ji, abhi humne 10 din ka program rakha hai ye 11 days ka. Very good. So there are more, aur bhi log aayenge na? Ek aur hamara ek program, matlab we are now working out the. The instructors ke liye program ah, right right so uh, very nice uh, david uh, uh, with this i think we are keeping our not only this boxing people you know the referees technical officials support everybody everybody is getting uh, engaged and uh, staying involved in whatever the uh, uh, lockdown area is uh, or time is concerned but very soon we'll be going back to boxing and all this knowledge come very handy. It's kind of a revision shock. And uh, I'm sure uh, you must be happy with uh, our uh, our FG's questions as well. Yes, I am. And I'm very impressed that they've taken the time to go to a course like this when, uh, when boxing is basically dormant at the moment. 
So uh, I hope that what I've had to say tonight has been of some use to you all and uh, that you may have benefited from it. Yes, we do. We do. So uh, thank you very much for being with us. And uh, uh, Chairman, RNJ Commission, congratulations for a wonderful uh, initiative. Uh, at the same time, the entire team which is working behind the scenes, Milan is uh, doing a wonderful job. Uh, Ashok, Sachediji, as usual, the BFI staff, uh, and all the participants. Thank you very much. Well, thanks very much, Jai. And, uh... Uh, sir, today, Mr. David has revealed a very wonderful uh, crux of the matter about judging is judging is important than the refereeing. Refereeing is a bit easy because you get good or normal about for 95% or 90%. But judging, every time you have to go through an examination. So judging is a difficult all the remote than the refereeing. And that's what Mr. David has revealed nicely. Thank you, Mr. David. It Thank must, you. It must be one of them there in Australia. I must extend my sincere thanks to Mr. David, Mr. Jay Poli, Secretary General, uh, our Executive Director, Mr. R.K. Sacheti and Colonel Sai Ashok for conducting this uh, seminar. And um, again, thanks to Mr. David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and have a good night. It must be very okay, late in Australia. Yes, yeah, it's about one o'clock in the morning. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay, thanks for all. Bye.